cluster of work piled neatly one on top of the other, a cube next to a cube. I leave behind work that doesn't relate to the topic of the title, Squaring the Circle. The exhibition titled Agreed Upon to symbolize the unison of my practice heavily involving a cube shape and the sphere. A packed boot of a small van seemingly too small to hold all the work, the move to an exhibition that will soon reflect my ongoing battle of self-identity and belonging begins. A robust, grungy, earthy, lived-in basement bears its historic walls through chipped wallpaper, paint residue and glitter of previous exhibitions. The space is not bare. The non-white wall gallery forced me to think thoroughly of where each piece would be placed in relation to the exposed brick, concrete and mossy walls. Some walls were unable to hold photographs as the damp walls would eat away at the material, exploring a new concept of how viewers perceive an exhibition space. Thinking about space, tones, shapes, heights and dimensions, the exhibition would start taking form easily through planning the direction and flow of the work. I had to experiment and plan around a variety of wall mounting techniques depending on the material of the walls. Here, the bricks were obviously not able to be pierced with a nail and hammer. I had to work around the grooves in between each brick where the cement crumbled easily around the nail. This meant that precision had to be lenient. On a triple light lit up plinth, delicate plaster and wax sculptures were chosen to be displayed, using leftover crumbled wax to dim the strong beam and dilute the flow of light throughout the acrylic and texture paste cube. The light beam was used to highlight the ethereal quality of the materials and the varied textures. I had to prepare the space for my own work, removing nails off the wall from previous exhibitions and chipping away at residue paint. As the space is robust within to previous exhibitions, the markings on the walls helps me to direct the layout of the three images which I wanted to hang above the white cube in a plant pot plinth to link the work with my research of self-identity through nature and nurture. The mossy cement cube hidden away in the chimney hole, another example of adapting and working with the space I was given. Wanting to use a recent experiment installation I had done on the university walls, I create individual tinfoil sheets with a square relief using a wooden cube. I wanted it to be more durable than the double-sided tape I previously used during my experimentation. Trying to use a string as a way of holding the entire structure failed, as it was too delicate, so I ended up stapling each sheet individually in a cascading, deteriorating manner on the dry wall, breaking it up where the exposed bricks were visible towards the bottom of the installation. This piece went next to a window, in the hopes that small gusts of wind would lift it up gently, creating crackling sounds and new reflections. I complete the transformative floor installation amongst the spheres where I created a square shape out of the B17C crackling fire tiles which I then sprawled half of the 100 spheres I had originally created to mimic an organic movement of growth, reflecting on the title squaring the circle of the exhibition. Wanting to display my ceramic forms and plaster cubes on ash flooring, we built a fire where old unusable paper was burnt and the ashes were sprawled over the square shaped wood chippings used as a base. This was to accentuate the sculptures as being otherworldly as that so they were created through a burnt past left behind with the ashes. Spending some time thinking about where each individual metallic ceramic forms would be displayed in order to complement the plaster and ink cubes, one was placed directly on top of a cube, creating a stronger link between the formal differences of the sculptures. The final exhibition is robust diverse and captivating in all its formal and tonal differences, while still having a strong link between each individual installation. Holding a minimalist approach through earthy and ethereal tones, the theme of self-identity is explored through the vast sculptures presenting my past as international and national experiences, such as the gold from the plaster and terracotta cubes, a direct link to my living in Asia. Photographs of the cubes amongst nature explore the concept of not quite fitting in or belonging. 
not being able to camouflage itself in natural environments despite having organic textural qualities. The mirrored cubes, a confrontation of the self, camouflages as they blend amongst the surroundings, reflecting each tone, color, and texture around the space. A strong connection with nature not only reflects the mossy walls and grungy aesthetics of the basement exhibition space, but also a link to the connection I have with my natural self, the core of all living beings. The exhibition Squaring the Circle allows the viewers to transport themselves to my interior battle and acceptance of not belonging to one place, and instead embracing the difference which makes us human.